what is the meaning, what's the experience of sanctification? Ask Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, all of them, they're going to give you different answers to that sanctification. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will take his people away in the rapture? And then after that, there will be the great tribulation. Which one is false? Rapture or great tribulation? As Pentecostal church number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, they're going to give you different answers. But come back to the Bible and I say, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide, tell me, you into what? All truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And he will show you things to come, eschatology, things to come. He'll show us. And that's the reason why we're saying that don't, don't waste your time running here, running there, running to all these places. Because if they have the real Holy Ghost, they'll come back to the Bible. The scripture will be at the center of the worship. And the scripture will be at the center of the lives of the families, of the ministers, of the members of that whole church. And then the evidence of the Holy Ghost will go out in the power of the Lord. And will go and preach the gospel, the real gospel. And people right, left, center, everywhere will be giving their lives to the Lord. I pray it will start here. It will start with you because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Number two, demanding God's unlimited provision. Demanding God's unlimited provision. We're looking at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, we're reading from verse 5. Luke chapter 11, verse 5. The Lord is talking about prayer here. He's talking about asking and receiving. You are going to ask today, and you are going to receive in Jesus' name. From verse 5, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and i have nothing to set before him and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the, the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give the i say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his because of his, tell me, because of his importunity. What's importunity? Asking and asking and asking. What's importunity? Standing for more than one minute, more than five minutes, more than ten minutes, and asking until you receive. What's importunity? Repeating that same thing. Oh Lord, you promised me this. And you said this is unto all place. I cannot go except I have this power. I cannot go except I have this unction. What can I be if I don't have this anointing? Oh, you ask from this direction. Lord, it is the, it is the bread for your children. I'm one of your children. Lord, it is your promise. Lord, it is what will give me the equipment and the authority and the power and the fire to be able to get the work done. Lord, without it, I will fail. Lord, if I don't have this, why am I a minister? Why am I a pastor? If I say I believe the scripture and the promise is unto me and I don't have this, so Lord, what will I do? How will I be able to do the work? You are committed to my hand. You ask from this angle, from the legal angle. Oh Lord, you said so. You said it's your covenant and you will not fail. You say it from the family angle. You will give it to all your children. You see, from the employment angle, you employed me and you put me in place that I should do this. Now, I need the tool, I need the equipment that will get you it done. You, you say it from the general angle. It's a general promise to everybody and I'm one of the people who said whosoever comes will not lack and you are going to give Lord I come. You say it from all angles that's opportunity. That's opportunity. Not, not that after you present it in one direction and nothing comes, then you just stand there and just stay there and then because the pastor said if your leg is spinning you you can sit down, if you are pregnant you can sit down and if uh, you know you are tired you can say, say they, they said if we are tired we should sit down and of course, of course you should sit down and then you sit down and then you bend your head, when will they finish now because we need to take our breakfast are you there? I said are you there? Ah, ah, you are the person I'm talking about Praise the Lord. But today, I said today, the power will come upon us in Jesus' name. 
because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Now let us look at this. He tells us in verse 9, and I say, the conclusion of that, the result of that, and I say unto you, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask this from the family angle now, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that say, Father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If he then, being evil, natural people, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Tell me the rest. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? Lord, when I ask mommy for breakfast, she gives me. When I ask daddy for this, uh, my clothing, he gives me. And this Holy Ghost is more important than my food. And this Holy Ghost is more important than clothing. Oh Lord, you will not deny me this. And my mother, he gives, she gives me the breakfast readily. My father gives me the clothing or whatever it is readily. How much more? How much more? Will you give the Holy Ghost unto me? Because I'm asking you. That's how to ask. And when you ask like that this morning, the Holy Ghost has come upon you already. It says, how much more? more shall your heavenly father it is say how much more shall their heavenly father you see your heavenly father yes. i said you see your heavenly father yes. now you are going to ask us another question the one that is living in adultery and fornication and stealing and robbery and smoking and drinking is god their heavenly father yes. jesus said ye are of your father the devil now the religious people that will not believe the bible and jesus emphasized and emphasized and emphasized to them and they exalted their tradition above the commandment of the word of god you see their heavenly father okay look at this now he said if you've been able know how to give the good things of your children how much more shall your heavenly father you must be a child of god first a submissive child of god a real child of god a person that says look your will is my will your desire is my desire and your passion is my passion what you say i accept and i will do is when he is your father your real father he will give the holy ghost to them to those who are children of god how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him he will give you Amen. ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us to him unto him be glory in the church by G by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen he's able to do he will do it this morning he will give that holy ghost to you in jesus name and then you are going to ask when you ask you are going to ask in faith everything you ask in faith the lord is going to do in james chapter one i'm reading from verse five James chapter 1 verse 5, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, the wisdom of the Spirit. If any of you lack power, the power of the Spirit. If any of you lack knowledge, the knowledge of the Spirit. If any of you lack the fire, the fervency of the Spirit. If any of you lack, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, abundantly, without any restriction or limitation, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I will not be a double-minded man. If you're going to receive, instead of being a double-minded man, you'll be a single-minded man. That this is what I want according to the promise. This is what I want according to the provision you will receive. 
coming to point number three now declaring the gospel with unusual power declaring the gospel with unusual power when you receive that anointing when that power comes upon you you then be able to declare the gospel with unusual power and let's come back to acts of the apostles chapter one acts chapter one we're reading from verse eight because this is the very reason why the holy ghost power was given not just to talk in tongues, talking in tongues is okay, it's all right. That's the initial evidence. But then the power, the demonstration of the power, that's what God is telling us about. And He says, So, have power. You receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then He says, And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth you have that power today and when you have that power you declare the gospel you'll preach the gospel with fervency, with fire with power with assurance with conviction and it will convict the people Micah chapter 3 verse 8 Micah chapter 3 we're reading there from verse 8 Micah chapter 3 reading from verse 8 but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. You see that? Here this man said, this minister said, and this the prophet of God said, truly, without any shadow, I feel it in my, in my soul. I sense it in my spirit. I know it the way the Lord is moving me. I, I know that. He said, truly, without any shadow of doubt, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of mind to declare, declaring the gospel with unusual power to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. That's what the Holy Ghost power does when he comes. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 15. When the Holy Ghost indwells within you. When the Holy Ghost is moving you and saturates your life. Luke chapter 1 verse 15 For ye shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and ye shall be, tell me feel with the Holy Ghost Do you see what the Lord is saying here? He's saying that you will not drink you will not be a drunkard and say be filled with the Holy Ghost you will not be intoxicated with politics and say be filled with the Holy Ghost it will not be intoxicated with human opinion, human idea, drunk, drunk with opinion and drunk with politics as with wine. No intoxication. It says, he shall not drink, shall neither drink wine nor strong drink. And then he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That's the evidence. That is the evidence. That is the evidence that when that Holy Ghost comes, the wisdom, the insight, the vision, the passion, the conviction to turn many people unto the Lord. That's the evidence of the presence of the Holy Ghost. And then it says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. That's Elijah. To turn, to turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children and it is obedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's look up here. You know, as you look at the continent of Africa and a lot of, a lot of preaching is going on. I, you know, as I travel around beyond Africa, uh, they tell me, they say that the center of gravity of Christendom Christianity has shifted to Africa. And I say, how did you come to that conclusion? Who would they say? We we'll see on the internet all these millions of people that are going to churches and are going to all these great meetings. And we we'll say, that means that Christianity in Africa is the only thing now. But as we look at all that, are those millions of people being made ready for the coming of the Lord? Think about that. And think about all the evil things that go on. The magic. The occultism. And think about all the things, you know, you hear their stories. 
And apart from hearing stories, you see their lies. You see the corruption in the offices. And these are the millions, millions of people that are rushing here and there. What I was saying is, when the real thing, the Holy Ghost, when he comes, is going to so walk within you and walk through you, that you will be making people ready for the coming of the Lord. How do you make them ready without holiness, without righteousness? Because it says, the bride has made herself ready, and then is clothed in white linen, and the white linen is what? The righteousness of the saints. What is the righteousness? I'm saying that the Holy Ghost coming upon us today, he'll make us ready. Yeah. He'll prepare us. And then he'll make you an instrument in the hand of the Lord to make other people ready for the coming of the Lord. Look at that verse 17 again. We should, all these traditions and all these uh, conventions of people that they have abandoned the scriptures. And they'll say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, without understanding what the Holy Ghost comes to do. When it comes into our lives, we need to kind of brush aside and lay aside and, you know, throw away all the conceptions of men, all the things that men have brought in to pollute Christianity. And then we come back to the real world and the Holy Ghost. If, when the Holy Ghost feels all of us who are here, and then you take that fire, and then you take that knowledge, and take that understanding, and take that pungency and power of the Holy Ghost, and you take it everywhere in this country and this continent, this continent will change. I said this continent will change. Already we know politicians cannot change any nation. You already know. Am I right? They cannot. They cannot. Politicians, they have their own agenda and their manifesto, but they cannot change the nation. The change of any nation and the change of any society and community is in the hand of the people, preachers who are filled with the Holy Ghost, and then we go everywhere. We're not compromising. We're not mutilating anything. We're saying the right thing and telling the people, this is the way. And when you say that in the power of the Holy Ghost, we are the instruments in the hands of the Almighty God that will bring the change in every nation in the continent of Africa. In Jesus' name. Look at it in verse, in verse 4, 15. Luke chapter 1, verse 15. For you will be great in the sight of the Lord. Ah, I've lost my time. I'm going to start all over again. And you know, you, you know, sometimes you put all these uh, wires and what do you call them, you plug them into the socket, and then there's a break somewhere. You look at your, what is it, tape recorder at your computer, you punch this, and nothing is moving. Then you go and look at, oh, there's no connection. If there's no connection between me and you, when we plug this and plug this, there's nothing. There's connection now. Yeah. I, I just went to check up. I just went, I didn't, I push it in very well. When I push it in, then I punch this, and then the thing just comes up like this. And you are coming up. Yeah. Because now, divine connection in your life. Yeah. That's the power of heaven and the glory of heaven and the anointing of the Holy Ghost will connect with your life today in Jesus' name. Look at it in verse 15, and you will be great in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. You will neither drink wine or strong drink, yeah. and you will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And many of the people in your nation, you will turn to the Lord their God. Yeah. You will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Yeah. And you will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And in disobedience to the wisdom of the just, you will make you, you here that I see here today, you are the people, you will make people ready and prepared for the coming of the Lord. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I accept that, I receive that. That is mine. The power, the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It is yours. Make your connection right now. It is yours. Make your connections right now and put your plug in that power of the Holy Ghost and say, oh Lord, here I come. Here I come. Divine connection. Divine connection, divine connection. Connect to that power now. Connect to that source now. You are born again. You are sanctified. You are cleansed. And all those, dr the drunkenness is gone. The smoking is gone. And all those works of the flesh, they are gone. Plug in. Plug in. Plug in. And connect right now. Let the power come upon you. Let the power come upon you. And you shall receive power. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you